everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela. I probably should have got a drink of water before I sat down to do this because I'm going to be talking a lot and I'm already feeling like a little bit uh, parched. It'll be fine though. Today we are going to chat about some very common homeschooling myths that I wanted to take a few minutes to sort of debunk for you. These are things that I hear all the time. And while I am a very, if you've been around my channel for any amount of time, I'm a pretty sarcastic, you know, I really appreciate a little humor, sometimes dry humor. I am gonna do my best. I'm sure I'm going to inject it here because I just simply cannot not. But please understand that I'm not being that way to be disrespectful to the topic or disrespectful to even the question. It's really just who I am and it's just meant to be fun. I wanna talk about these topics. There's no reason that people should have to feel like they have to take sides and choose it's homeschooling versus public schooling. It's public schooling versus private schooling. Like it doesn't have to be like that, y'all. So let's have a little fun with it. Let's chat about these questions, these myths that I hear all the time. Let's debunk them a little bit and we're going to have a little fun while we do it. Okay. Does that sound good to you guys? We're all adults. We can all just have fun and like laugh a little bit and it's all good. Okay. Here we go. All right. So number one myth. And if you are a homeschooler, you know that this is by far the number one thing you get asked about. And it's also one of the things that people who are considering homeschooling will often bring up as a point of not sure if they can homeschool because socialization. It is a buzz word surrounding homeschooling. I understand because I think that so many things that we ask people or we question are all just kind of like this ingrained built into us that we don't think it through. But that's what we're here to talk about today. We're going to, we're going to bust that myth. Is socialization really such a major thing for homeschoolers? No, no. In fact, it is not. And here's why. Number one, is that when a child goes to school and they sit in a classroom of 30 peers that are exactly their same age, um, that is not socialization. That is forced association. It is very different. Socialization can be defined as the process of learning to behave in a way that is acceptable to society. So if you think about what people, I think what people really mean with that question is how will your kids make friends? I think that's what they really mean because how will they learn to behave in a way that it is acceptable socially to society? Well, that's just going to happen by growing up and being a human, whether that's learning at home or learning at school, you're going to learn how to socialize, how to behave in a way that's acceptable within society, uh, no matter where you go to school. So that is actually kind of a silly question. If you really break it down to what that means, it doesn't even quite make sense. I think again, what people really mean is how will your kids make friends? But I want to just drive my point home a little further. So I'm going to quote for you an article from USA today, and I will leave these articles linked down below so that you know that I'm not full of malarkey. Um, but this article says other studies have begun chipping away at the conception of homeschooling as socially stunting students. Research shows that an average homeschooled student routinely participates in eight social activities out outside of the home and typically consume considerably less television than do traditionally educated students. They are also more likely to have higher self-esteem and be less susceptible to peer pressure. And I think that that's something that as homeschoolers, we so desperately want people to know is that we're not homeschooling our children so that they don't have friends, so that they don't get out and do things. In fact, you've seen on our channel, you've seen if you follow our vlogging and stuff like that, like our children get out all the time. They interact with people. Homeschool children are interacting with people in homeschooling groups at their church and church groups in small groups in friend groups in co-ops in small classes. They might take at the YMCA in whatever sports or things like that, that they're doing. I mean, one of my favorite memes is when people joke around about homeschoolers and socialization and you flash back to, don't you remember your teachers in school telling you, you're here to learn. You're not here to socialize. It, exactly. Like if you're in school, you're there to learn. Of course you will make friends because of that forced association. You will make friends. Um, but homeschoolers can make friends as well through other areas of their life where they are forced into association in, uh, you know, Sunday school classes or sports or things like that. So we all face situations in life where we're forced into association with other people. Um, but actually socializing, maintaining friendships, learning how to behave, all of those things can happen no matter which environment you are schooling your children in. The second myth, y'all, this one makes me chuckle a little bit. I totally understand it, but hear me out. I would love to homeschool my kids, but I just don't feel like I know enough 
or I could never homeschool my kids because I just don't feel like I know enough. What's funny to me about that is if you really stop and think about what you're saying, again, this is sometimes I feel like forced things that we say, but if you really stop and think about what you're saying is, you went all the way through the public school system, for example, we're just using this as an example. You went all the way through the public school system and you left not feeling that you learned enough to adequately share that information with another person. It really doesn't, it's kind of mind blowing when you think about it that way, like, wait a minute, you're saying that you didn't learn much, but that's where you want to send your kids because you trust that they'll learn what they need to. It just, it doesn't totally add up. Now, here's where I will say, when I say debunking this myth, I want to get into why you actually do, even if you don't remember stuff, trust me. I want to add that we all feel that way. Part of what I have loved the most about homeschooling is getting to relearn these things at a time in my life when I'm really interested in them and really care more and want to know more. I am learning alongside my children every day. That is one of my favorite parts about homeschooling is I'm like, man, I remember when we talked about this a little bit, but I just didn't retain it because um, it wasn't something that I was interested in. I mean, it's studies have proven time and time again, you can memorize something long enough to pass it on a test and then forget about it. Um, the things that you're really interested in are the things that you're going to retain for the most part. So again, I feel like that's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting thing that people say, again, if you extrapolate it all the way out and think it through to the logical end of what you've said, it doesn't actually really make sense. I think it's very important to remember that there are so, so, so many resources available. You do not have to know everything about everything to homeschool your children. It, you just don't. And there are so many ways to fill in the gaps of things that you don't know. Like I said, you are gonna learn along the way, but um, especially if you have a child that is very academically advanced, so you feel like this kid is smarter than me, I cannot help them. Um, and they might even be struggling in school because they're too smart for what they're doing in school too. I mean, this happens all the time. And so there are so many resources out there for children just to keep, they, they when they're hungry for that knowledge, there's ways for them to find it and to keep learning. And one of my favorite, and I've talked about this before, is Khan Academy. It's totally free. There are so many advanced level classes and things on there. Your kids can just open that up and go to town. So I never want parents to feel like moms or dad, whoever's doing homeschooling, to feel like just because you're not an expert in US history doesn't mean you can't teach US history to your kids. Um, again, remembering that especially in the elementary years, it is all very, very basic stuff and it takes three times of hearing something before you really, really retain it. So that's why a lot of these history curriculums are very cyclical and you'll do like three to four years and then repeat those same time periods again um, so that it helps you to retain or helps the child to retain the information. So don't feel like you have to know everything. That is, that is a myth. You don't have to know everything to be able to homeschool your kids and homeschool them well. All right, the next myth is that it's expensive. This kind of goes with number four. So people feeling that it might be too expensive or feeling that they need certain things to be able to homeschool. I need a classroom set up in my home. I need a closet full of manipulatives and hands-on activities. I need to be able to afford to travel to all these places or go on all these field trips and stuff like that. Y'all, that is not necessary to homeschool. Homeschooling, if you just wanna get down to like bare bones, okay, you need two things to homeschool your children. Uh, number two pencil and a library card. If you, if your library has access to the internet, you have access to books, it'd be great if you could throw in a, a piece of paper and a pencil to take some notes. But um, I'm being kind of sarcastic here, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. You do not need all the stuff. Some of us love all the stuff. I've been homeschooling for many years now. I've collected stuff over the years. I love having the stuff available for my kids, the resources and everything, but it's not required in any way. Um, there are also many wonderful online curriculums as well as a curriculum I can tell you right now at the top of my head that's totally free. The all-in-one Easy Peasy Homeschool, everything is online, it's completely free. Um, the Good and the Beautiful has multiple levels of their language arts that you can download. I believe it's levels one through five. 
and you could just keep them on your computer and print them out. Uh, my friend Serena uploads hers. She has this way, you'd have to watch her video, but she has this way where she gets it onto an iPad so her kids can do worksheets on the iPad. Um, there's so many different ways. And like I said, there are a few curriculums themselves that you can get for totally free. I would also encourage you to check out used bookstores, the Goodwill for books. Um, there are used homeschooling stores where you can buy curriculum for a lot less. It just doesn't have to be expensive. And you certainly do do not have to have need and a lot of people don't even want a homeschooling room uh, they just want to do it at their kitchen table at their dining room table uh, at the coffee table you know sitting down in front of the couch really I mean in the in your kids lap on a clipboard in the car or while you're out and about there's so many different ways to make it work into your life and what your scenario is what your situation is what your budget is you can absolutely spend a fortune on homeschooling and that's one of my you know I love sharing this content with y'all and what I buy and what I'm doing but I also never want someone to feel like you have to do all those things I do those things because I like to and I'm at a place in my life where we can we haven't always been able to homeschooling was very, very basic for us in the beginning years. And the longer we've done it and the more our family's grown and things like that, we've been able to, but you don't have to. It's not necessary in any, any way. Your kids need to just get out in nature. You don't have to go to expensive children's museums. You can go for a hike in the woods. It's totally free, bring a water bottle, you're good to go. There's just so many amazing options and I never want someone to feel like money or lack of a big house or a space or something like that should be a reason that stops them from homeschooling if that's what is on their heart and that's what they wanna do for their family. Another thing that people will say is like, they're totally fine with you homeschooling, but then they always add the caveat, but you're gonna send them to high school, right? Like as if there's just no possible way you could homeschool a high schooler. I will admit it is very intimidating, but there are some incredible, incredible women, especially here on this YouTube community that are homeschooling high school that have some really amazing resources. It's absolutely possible. There are children that are excelling being homeschooled for high school. I did want to kind of share with you guys a little bit because a lot of times people will ask, well, if you do that though, can your kids go to college? I get asked that a lot. If you're homeschooling, can your kids go to college? Yes, they absolutely can. There's also some, you know, kind of buzz floating around that, oh, maybe colleges prefer homeschooled kids to public schooled kids, that kind of thing. So I have a little bit more I wanna read you from this USA Today article, just so we can clarify this, this topic about high school and college and homeschoolers and all of that. Research shows that homeschooled students are certainly capable of adjusting to the college curriculum academically. Homeschooled students generally score slightly above the national average on both the SAT and ACT and often enter college with more college credits. Studies have also shown that on average, homeschool students have higher grade point averages in their freshman years and have higher graduation rates than their peers. In addition to academic competence, research also asserts that homeschool students are able to cope well with the emotional transition to college. Guys, whether you homeschool, public school, private school, these are all, these are all transitions of life. And so they're going to be difficult on your child in various ways, no matter what schooling choice you have made. This is another thing that I think, I wish I would have touched on a little earlier in the video, but I just wanna add is that a lot of times, if a child is more introverted, shy, quiet, if they are a homeschooled child, people blame it on homeschooling. But walk into any public school, remember back to your experience maybe in public school or private school, were there not children who were introverted, quiet, shy, a little weird, strange, all of these things? Of course, because there's no, no two children are exactly alike and children who are shy and introverted are gonna be that whether they're homeschooled or in public school. It's just diversity in humans and our interaction and things like that. So that is one thing that drives me a little bit nuts is that I feel like homeschoolers are expected to have outgoing, extroverted, on top, academically over the top, children when in reality it's just like in public school we have children that struggle we have children that excel we have children that love to be around others and want to do that and we have children who just kind of want to stay in their own little their own little bubble um, now as far as college goes this is an article from business insider and again i will list it down below the high achievement level of homeschoolers is readily recognized by recruiters from some of the best colleges in the nation education expert dr susan berry recently told alpha omega schools such as massachusetts 
Institute of Technology, Harvard, Stanford, and Duke University all actively recruit homeschoolers, Barry said. The real value lies in what the added freedom of homeschooling allows students to do with their time. Contrary to popular belief, homeschoolers are not shut-ins. Research suggests that homeschooled children actually gain closer ties to their community, relating to people outside of their grade level. Homeschoolers learn to become active participants in their neighborhoods and soak up the etiquette of adult life in the process. Parents facilitate this intimacy with the real world in a way public education rarely achieves. And I think that's the point, is it's not that homeschooled kids are so much smarter, or anything like that. The reason that oftentimes colleges will seek them out is because a lot of those, that well-roundedness, a lot of the extracurricular things, that being involved in the community, all these things that they're looking for, especially those really high-level colleges at making you a well-rounded student, can often be more readily found through homeschool because those children have the freedom. They are doing their school for just a few hours a day and then they have the freedom to really plug into their community, plug into jobs, plug into things they care about. To sum it up, there are benefits to both. There are benefits to public school, there are benefits to homeschool. But what I really wanted to do today is just to debunk some of those myths that homeschoolers are socially awkward, that they're o overly intelligent or not intelligent enough, that they get into colleges easier. All these different thoughts that people have about about homeschoolers, I just really wanted to shed a little light on that for you today. And that just because something is different from the way you grew up or the way that you do things or the way that you wanna do things with your kids doesn't make it bad or wrong, it's just different. So that is my little video about homeschooling myths today. Hopefully I've debunked some of them for you. If you have any extra that you wanna add or discuss, let's talk about those in the comments down below. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And I will see y'all again very soon. Bye.